But uh, I would definitely like to thank my family, especially, and my main advisor, Ryan Starr, and Parker, of course. Um, but this is my capstone project for PD Pure, which was my company I designed. So, who am I? Um, number one, I think my main identity is a student athlete, as most people who know me know. Um, I'm constantly out of class, out of swim meet, or physical therapy or something. Um, but I am interested in STEM, and that's what I will be pursuing in college. I am a nature enthusiast. I love being outside. I love the polar bears. I want to save the planet. So I'm interested in environmental engineering or mechanical engineering because I want to do something with my career that helps the planet. Um, I've been with Mr. Combs in his class for four years. We're like BFFs at this point. <laughs> I've seen him constantly, even over COVID. Um, so I'm CSWA and CSWP certified. And I've learned a lot on SolidWorks, but other than like a little gear car assignment, I've never actually made a physical project. So for me, this was a learning experience of how to take materials and actually come up with something I could hold in my hand, which I've never really done before. So for my advisors that I mentioned earlier, number one, Ryan Starr, star of the show. He helps me out <laughs> big time. Um, he is an IT director. He works manufacturing. He oversees plumbers, which was a big one. He put me in contact with a master plumber, which was some advice that I definitely needed because I was thinking of a shower head, something that works with all of that, but I don't really know how showers work. I just take one every day. Um, so that helped me a lot. He had lots of advice to give me. And then my mom, she's always everywhere. You've probably seen her. Um, she's an IT manager, retired, but she still has the skill set. And she helped with problem solving, brainstorming. She knows a lot of technology, maybe too much, a little too much advice sometimes. But um, she really helped. She actually helped me brainstorm ideas that I wouldn't have thought of before, which helped move my project along big time, past the roadblocks. And then my dad, he's a purchasing manager. He helped purchase things for me with his credit card. That was his big role. Um, he also does the manufacturing stuff. He knows a lot about finances. His big questions for me were like, how are you going to market this if it was an actual product? Like, would people buy this? Um, that made me think of like different changes I would make if I made this more than a prototype. And then my peer advisor, Parker Gus, he's also a swimmer, so he relates, and he is a great emotional support for me. So, my project inspiration. I'm a swimmer, shower twice, three times a day, in specifically nasty Grandy showers. If you've ever been in the Grandy locker room, you probably know the water comes out white sometimes, it's gross. I pay to have blonde hair, so I don't really want it ruined by that. And I thought I would make something I would actually use. Like, I would buy this, maybe for pink, more aesthetically pleasing. But <laughs> I would definitely take this with me to swim meets or to travel. Um, and I wanted to learn about how to clean water. My career comparison, which was research we did at the start of first semester about things we might want to do after college, I was looking at um, more environmental energy environmental engineering, sorry, and just how you would purify water on a bigger scale. Um, and then I'm always on the go. I know this looks big, but some ideas I had were it has a zipper. I could put my products that I use for the actual shower inside here, carrying case for my toiletries, um, no bigger than my actual bags, as my mom knows. <laughs> um, and as I said, it's something I would use. And I know a lot of other girls I know, and boys as well, if they care about their hair or skin, <laughs> would use it too. Um, project description, pretty simple. It's a shower head color. Um, and inside is a replaceable filter because I wanted it to be environmentally friendly. 
and buying another shower head, especially that big that's made of plastic every six months isn't environmentally friendly or viable. Um, it's water softening and it's universally transportable, that's why it's so big. Um, shower heads usually go up to six inches, other than that rainfall one up there, but I'm assuming if you have a rainfall shower head, you probably have a filter on it already. But it could fit out all those other types and you can bring it basically anywhere, public showers, hotels, even outdoor showers. So my project objectives, number one, as I said before, was to make an actual product. And I've never actually made physical product before, 3D printed and stuff. I know that seems simple for some people, but it wasn't really anything I did before because we were mostly doing solid works and all the classes I've taken. Um, and then planning skills, <laughs> not to procrastinate. I think I did pretty good not procrastinating. My timeline, like most people's, did get moved a lot. But I ended up getting everything done. Maybe yesterday, but that's okay. <laughs> Uh, and then working on my presentation skills. That's the part I'm working on right now. Hopefully they're getting better. As you guys know, Mr. Combs had some critiques on my initial presentation at the start of the year. Um, fear of public speaking. Number one fear in America. I have it. Most of you have it. And then learning more about the field of water treatment engineering. I did most of that in my career comparison, but I also learned how to just take something small like this and take care of the hard water that's in most places. So this is my logo. It's a water drop with a little shower head inside of it because it's a shower head. <laughs> and then the red is supposed to represent bold and energetic and blue is professional. So if we're on shelves, hopefully it would be something people look at next to maybe the bathroom supplies I'd probably put it shampoos and conditioners, not by the shower heads because my dad puts the shower heads, not me, so I would never see it in that section. Um, for my initial timeline, I don't expect you guys to read this, but the gist of it is semester one. I thought I was going to be researching through December. It's a research project. I wasn't actually researching through December. I was researching the whole time for every part I made. Um, and then I had a bunch of time allotted to work on my presentation and stuff at the end, but that was actually just a buffer because I knew I'd be absent a lot for swim meets and stuff. Um, so basically everything in semester one and halfway through semester two got dragged down to yesterday, to last week. I was working the whole time. <laughs> and then Semester two was when I started printing. I ordered all my parts, and assembly took a while, a lot longer than I expected. <laughs> so the research, my initial stage was just the first four weeks, but it extended the whole time. Um, for weeks five to seven, which was before winter break, I researched on modeling. I was working like with Mr. Combs because I didn't know how to make certain components and watching a lot of YouTube videos for research. And for weeks 8 to 10, I ordered supplies on my dad's credit card um, and learned how to mold the pore silicone, which is really expensive, um, unfortunately, but it worked out. And then I began having Mr. Combs 3D print my parts. And then for weeks 11 through 14, I did final design changes. And initially, my screw parts did not fit together because the tolerances were a little off. Um, and then I finished all my 3D printing, including the mold parts. And I poured my silicone, let that set. And these last four weeks, I demolded the silicone, which was one of my biggest pitfalls. I did purchase silicone that said it did need a release agent in the mold, but apparently it did, so it took about a week to saw it out of the mold. <laughs> um, and then I assembled my final product, which you can see right here and right here. Um, and then I spent about a week working on my presentation. So, for my research, 
Most of it's not physical text and stuff. I was watching a lot of videos, as I said, mostly on YouTube. And a lot of them were on the silicone manufacturer's website on how to use various types. I ended up not being able to use the specific silicone I would use for an actual product because we don't have a vacuum degasser here at Grandview, but this is pretty strong, pretty flexible, and works pretty well for a prototype, so that was good. Um, advisor input was another big part of my research. As I said, me and Brian, close family, friends, and neighbors, so we had some meetings in person. He gave me lots of advice. Um, some of that was to make the threads tolerances really small, which was part of the reason why initially they didn't fit together, but um, with stainless steel parts, they would slide together better because they don't have the little ridges like 3D printed parts. And then water pressure is a big one if you're putting a cover on a shower head because the filter component can't block the water flow or else it's just going to start squirting out the top sides, exploding, which we don't want. Um, and then for materials, if I were to make this more than a prototype, everything would be stainless steel. I did make this shower plate part stainless steel over at CCIC, which would be something I'd actually use. It has a bunch of holes to distribute the water and make the pressure feel good. And then my final product. These were my final SolidWorks renderings. Um, as you can see up there, there's not the little zipper piece, which is part of what my mom helped me brainstorm. This is what I was having a hard time thinking of because if I just left it a hole at the top and stretched it over like I initially wanted to, um, it wouldn't be strong enough to stay on the shower. So we have a waterproof zipper here, which is waterproof on both sides. They use it in scuba suits, I think. And that's what helps hold it on. So that's not up there. But we have the main silicone component, um, a shower plate, and the base which holds the plate in the washer. And the middle disc is actually a filter component. So it doesn't show it up there. It's pretty hard to make a bunch of tiny little filter balls on SolidWorks. But it's filled with two layers of stainless steel, really fine mesh, and it has mineral filtering balls and activated charcoal as the main component. Um, the goal of that is to soften the water, purify it, and take out any particles that are in it that would be in unfiltered shower water. So here's a closer look at the base component. One of my biggest pitfalls was learning how to make a screw component. There's a new screw tool on SolidWorks, wasn't working for me, so Mr. Combs recommended some YouTube videos where I just made a helix spiral and extruded cut um, a small screw profile out. And my final project, I don't have a video of it working because I kind of had to like hold it while I was testing it because the plastic isn't metal and the washer is also 3D printed so it's a little unstable on there but it does go on, the water comes out of it and as far as I'm concerned the water is clean and it's filtered um, which was my main objective. Um, so as you can see, this was kind of just a little unstable with the plastic parts and I didn't want it to break before my presentation. Um, and there's my bibliography and questions.
doesn't stick to the silicone very well, so I would replace that. And then other than that, I think it's a pretty useful product. It's like, yeah. Good job. Can you walk through the filter layers again? Yes. I don't actually have a picture of them, but. You're like, where are these in the comments? Um, yeah. Yes, at the top. Yep. Okay, there we go. So this is the base right here, and the filter is right here. So it's like the bulk of the actual filter. It's just screwed in so you don't see it as much. And then I'd say about like a half inch of that is the actual filter. And it's like a sandwich of really fine grain stainless steel mesh with the filter fabric and components in the middle of it. Yeah. Did you design the actual like filter part of your stuff yourself or just the um, casing to go over the shower? No, I designed that for myself. Yeah. Um, how often would you have to change the filter or do you not need to? So normally for shower filters you'd need to replace like the little filter pug part itself once a month, but I would be using it every day. So I'd say probably every six months based off how much I shower in public places. But there'd probably be something on packaging saying like 50 uses. Yeah. Grace? Besides the silicone, are there any other materials you wish you could have used? Um, I really wish it could have just been metal, you know, because then I could actually use it. <laughs> Like I could be using this in the shower right now, which I would enjoy. 